daily lives, we actually use units to represent different quantities of items. Like for example, when we wear a pair of shoes, we are referring to two shoes. If you are asked to get a dozen of eggs, you know that you are to get 12 eggs. Now what about particles? Particles, they are minute in size and there are so many of them, it is pretty impossible to count all of them. Hence, we use a unit called mole to count particles. So one mole of a substance simply means that there are 6 times 10 power 23 of these particles. And now what exactly is 6 times 10 power 23? It's just a very huge number and it doesn't make sense for us to list down all the zeros. So we decide to write this number down in standard form. Like for example, we can leave 100 in a standard form, it will be 1 times 10 power 2. If you want to leave a value of 2000, it will be 2 times 10 power 3. If you are dealing with 50,000, then we can leave it in 5 times 10 power 4. So 6 times 10 power 23 simply means that it's 6 followed by 23 zeros. So you can see that it is a very huge number. So now since one mole of substance contains 6 times 10 power 23 of these particles, it means that 5 moles of this substance will contain 5 times 6 times 10 power 23 of particles. What about half a mole? Half a mole simply means that it will be 0 0.5 multiplied 6 times 10 power 23. Hence, we can simply say that the number of particles is actually number of moles multiplied 6 times 10 power 23. The particles can be molecules, can be atoms, can be ions. It really depends on what substance we are dealing with. So let's say we got one more of neon. Neon is over here in group 0 of the periodic table. Now neon, we know that this is a very special non-metal that does not take part in any chemical reaction. So they exist as atoms. So when we talk about one mole of neon, we are actually referring to 6 times 10 power 23 neon atoms. What about one mole of copper 2 ions, which is Cu2 plus? Now copper 2 ions, this very straightforward, we are dealing with ions in this case. What about one mole of hydrogen gas? We know that hydrogen, it only has one valence electron. So hydrogen is not stable on its own as an atom. So it will need to form a molecule with another hydrogen to attain the stable noble gas electronic configuration. So when we talk about hydrogen gas, we are actually referring to hydrogen molecules as the particles. So we got 6 times 10 power 23 hydrogen molecules in one mole of hydrogen gas. Now we have different elements that we are dealing with. Now we know that elements, they can exist as atoms or molecules. So in the question, the data that we are given is 1 gram. To determine number of atoms, we will need to know the number of moles. Are we able to work out number of moles if we are given mass? Yes, we can. Now we are focusing on this part over here. We are given mass in grams. So to work out the number of moles, we simply need to use the mass divided by the molar mass to determine the number of moles. Iodine is over here in the periodic table. It is in group 7, it is a halogen. So we know that halogen, they all exist as diatomic molecules. So iodine exists as I2. Now the relative atomic mass of one iodine atom is 127. For I2, it will be 127 multiplied by 2, which is 254. Okay, so the number of moles of iodine will be the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 254. What about the next substance, iron? Now, iron, it is a metal. Now, metals, they exist as atoms. Iron is over here. 
Okay, so what is the relative atomic mass? It is actually 56, right? So to determine the number of moles, we will just need to use 1 over 56. What about the next one? Now oxygen, many of us will know that molecular formula is actually O2, alright? So oxygen, it exists as molecule. Two oxygen atoms covalently bonded and each of them attain the stable noble gas electronic configuration. So to determine number of moles of oxygen, we will need to use the mass, which is 1, divided by the molar mass. Oxygen is over here. What is the relative atomic mass of oxygen? It is 16. So what is the molar mass of oxygen gas? It will be 16 multiplied by 2, which is 32. So to determine number of moles of oxygen gas, we will need to use the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 32. Now, so we know the number of moles of each option. The next thing that we're able to determine is the number of particles. So we are referring to this part. So if we are to find the number of particles, we will need to use the number of moles, which we have already determined, multiplied by the Avogadro's number, which is 6 times 10 power 23. For iodine, it will be 1 over 254 multiplied by the Avogadro's number. Okay, let me just represent that by an A. Okay, for iron, it will be 1 over 56 multiplied by the Avogadro's number. For oxygen, it will be 1 over 32 multiplied by the same number, okay, 6 times 10 power 23. Now at this point, are we able to very accurately determine the number of atoms in the same mass of the options? Now don't be tricked by this question. Now the key word in this question is actually number of atoms. Now these different substances, some of them exist as atoms, some of them exist as molecules. So for those that exist as atoms, it is pretty straightforward. The number of atoms will be what we have worked out which we represent in red. But what about those that are molecules? Now for iodine, we know that in one iodine molecule, there are two atoms. If we have this number of iodine molecules, then we will just simply need to multiply by 2, which gives me 2 over 254 multiplied by Avogadro's number, which is 1 over 127 multiplied by the Avogadro's number. What about oxygen? In one oxygen molecule, there are two oxygen atoms. So the number of oxygen atoms will be 2 multiplied by this number of oxygen molecules. Okay, so we will have 2 over 32 multiplied Avogadro's number, which gives us 1 over 16 multiplied Avogadro's number. So now at this point, have you determined what is the correct answer? Okay, they are asking for the greatest number of atoms in the same mass. If you want the greatest number of atoms, we we'll just need to select the one with the smallest denominator. Now, if you find this video useful, please share with your friends. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you'd like to have more chemistry resources, do check out my website. The link is in the description below. Free access to these very useful notes is also available in my website. I have also provided the link in the description below. Have fun learning chemistry and I will see you soon.